We have a real treat for you today, including colorful flowers, a variety of shrubs, and fascinating combinations of pathways and seating areas from which to enjoy the surrounding sights and sounds. Some people look at yards like these and are overwhelmed with the thought of endless yard work, but for our first guest today, it has turned into a passionate expression of creativity. For Brad Lowe's, his wife Melody, and their daughter Hannah, wandering through their farmyard near Watson, Saskatchewan on a warm summer day makes for some very enjoyable family time. Melody told us they have been living here for about 14 years and are proud to be the third generation Lowe's family on this yard. But she says other than the main vegetable garden, the yard looks almost completely different from when they first moved here. There were plum trees and apple trees that that were in the yard that have since gotten fire blight and had to be destroyed. Um, but um, most of the flower areas were over by the house and underneath the mature trees. So none of this was here. One of their first projects was here behind the garage where they put in paving stones and raised the area by bringing in some topsoil. Melody's main goal here was to crowd out the weeds by covering the ground with plants and flowers. Stelladoro daylilies, and those show up in very areas, various areas of the yard. I like to have repetition. Um, it, it, it makes more of a cohesive pattern. And one of my favorites are lilies. So I've got, I think in, all together in the whole yard, close to 20 varieties of pink and yellow lilies. And then I, a few years ago, I started adding the shrubs for more of a backdrop and more of a substance and color and texture and things like that. And, and uh, it's gone from there. Further out into the yard is an area they call the sunken terrace, since it's a few feet lower than the rest of the yard. The goal here was to frame it in, make it a, a, a bit of a sanctuary. And um, it's a great place to watch hummingbirds and listen to the bees and enjoy the plants. There's more daylilies in this area, more lilies, hostas. As is the case with many prairie gardeners, Melody has learned to deal with loss and disappointment and modify her planting strategy accordingly. So now we come into sort of the focal point uh, this is the, the round pathway, and unfortunately the clematis that used to grow up there winter killed. We had a bad winter, so we had quite a few plants that were lost, but we filled it with shrubs. It was designed actually to be a rose garden, and about eight years ago all the roses, all the roses disappeared. It was, there was another hard winter, so the roses are here now. This is an Adelaide hoodless rose, and it blooms and blooms and blooms and blooms. It's a beautiful, beautiful rose. The brick pathway gives visitors a close-up view of the roses and other flowers in this area, which is exactly what the Lowe's family had in mind when they put it together. I bought it as a kit to be just a, a little round terrace, but instead we Remove, we, we redesigned it and used the bricks instead to be uh, a pathway. Designed this way because um, I like to have a lot of pathways so that you can see different aspects as you walk through. And this round section forces you not to go straight through but to go around. And it, it forces you to slow down and enjoy the garden from different aspects. So. Um, it's a bit of a meandering path through, through the garden. Beyond the bricks is an eye-catching stone pathway. Melody told us this was a lengthy project and eventually involved a number of their friends and neighbors. Well, it took probably almost 10 years to source all these flat rocks. It started off that um, my husband Brent He'd be working in the field and he would find a few and he started stockpiling them for me because he knew that I was enjoying them and making pathways. Uh, after a few years it got so that we had a few farmer friends and, and uh, they would start setting aside the flat rocks in, on their property too for me. So um, 
sometimes we'd be on vacation and see one in a ditch somewhere and pick one up. So they're, they're from all over the place and it took a long time, but uh, we finally got the pathway finished. <laughs> As my husband says, heaven, heaven forbid that a farmer would ever buy a rock. As we saw earlier, Melody is a big fan of lilies, including some which are not very well known in North America. So these are Mardigan lilies, and they are, I believe, from China. Um, originally, they, they grew wild there, and they are relative to lilies, but the foliage is quite a bit different, and the blooms are tinier but more abundant. They just have a, a different form. So um, I've got a few patches of Mardigan lilies, and those are a little bit more unusual for our area. Some people don't know about them. Um, and those are very beautiful. Some gardeners will tell you that delphiniums are more work than they are worth, but Melody is convinced that this eye-catching flower is well worth the effort. They're beautiful plants. A few days ago we had a wicked windstorm, so I've had to tie them up so they're not quite at their best today, but um, they're beautiful. They attract bees and hummingbirds, and um, they do require more maintenance because they do tend to get really heavy, especially in a year like this year, we've had so much moisture. The, the plants themselves, the base of the plants bes besides the, the formal flowering area are so tall and so heavy. So they do require some maintenance. The Lowe's family enjoy the self-sufficiency of having a large and bountiful vegetable garden. That enjoyment is extended to spending quality time in their very useful herb garden. Greek oregano and some thyme and some sage and some rosemary and uh, a little bit of lemon basil. And um, those are really great for cooking with. It's really fun to come out and, and have some fresh herbs for some recipes that I like. When she first started gardening, Melody says she was mostly looking for a sunny area to grow some pretty plants, but it quickly turned into a lot more than that. I just found that I was enjoying it so much and loving the plants themselves, and uh, I started researching and reading a lot about different kinds of plants and memorizing some of the names, and, and um, it just turned into a real passion for me. Quite a while back, Melody read in a book that unless you put a bench in your garden, you'll only go out there to work. She really took that to heart and has included more than enough places to sit and enjoy the yard. And it started off just, um, if, I, if I saw a seating arrangement I liked, I would get it and incorporate it, but now it's come with a little bit more thought and intent. Uh, so the different seating areas I have, one is for having morning coffee, one is for visiting with friends. They have different purposes. Her yard beautification work has inspired Melody as a writer, which resulted in her first book called 40 Days with God in the Garden. Even though Melody is definitely the head gardener in this operation, she readily admits that many of her yard projects would never happen without the help of her husband, Brett. They are looking at doing some garden art projects in the future, including one that may involve turning an old feed trough into a water feature.